Michelle is taking a piece of the jaw to one of the few places in the world where the tests he needs can be done. The Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Germany, is one of the world's foremost centers for human evolutionary studies. Here, the jawbone of the child from Sclodina is put through a high-powered CT scan. This allows researchers to peer into the internal structure of the teeth and bone. So this is the, the mandible that was uh, scanned yesterday, the Sclenida mandible. And uh, we have built up what uh, we call a surface model, which is basically a, a virtual representation of the mandible in a computer. We can separate all the teeth from the bone in the specimen. The features that we can uh, explore uh, show us how uh, Neanderthal are similar to us in, in many aspects, but also how they are different. The teeth of children are among the most prized of all archaeological finds, because only they can tell us how fast those children were growing up. If we look at the pattern of eruption of the teeth, the, the Scladina uh, child, by modern standards, should be about 11 or 12 years old. The second molar is, is almost completely erupted. Uh, but when we look at the internal structures of the enamel and dentine, it has been shown that it's, it's in fact much younger. We know that this child died around eight years old. Although the boy from Skladina would have looked like us, he probably grew up much more quickly. That means he had much less time for brain development and learning. But is it safe to assume the Neanderthals were less intelligent than we are? The crucial evidence comes from skull. Endocasts, impressions taken from the inside of Neanderthal's skull, have revealed brains with many similarities to ours. When we look at the Neanderthal endocast, we find a frontal lobe that we can't really differentiate from modern Homo sapiens. The Broca's caps that have to do with the motor control, motor aspects of speech, are thoroughly human in terms of their form. So if the front of the Neanderthal brain is similar to ours, what about the rest of it? Today, scientists like Katerina Havarti are trying to measure fossil skulls with new precision. She uses a special instrument to digitize the skulls and create perfect three-dimensional images. We've known for a long time that Neanderthals look different from modern humans ever since they were first discovered and described. But the question then becomes, what does this difference actually mean? This is a digitized 3D image of our own skull with its characteristic high dome. By contrast, the Neanderthal skull is low and elongated, possibly indicating a different brain shape the parts of the Neanderthal brain, called the parietal and temporal lobes, may have been slightly smaller. That small difference could have had a large impact on their mental ability. There are regions of the parietal lobes and the temporal lobes that are very important in cognition, particularly in terms of language, in memory, in remembering spatial locations. The reduced size of those regions of Neanderthal brains might be a sign of limited thinking powers. But the boy from Skladina's jawbone has more to tell us about other limitations. Back at the Max Planck Institute, Mike Richards is delving even deeper into the microstructure of the bone to find out about his diet. The food we eat leaves a chemical signature in our bodies these signatures are incorporated into the protein of our bones. 
So what we do is get the bone and we take that protein out and measure those signatures. We can work backwards and say, this is the food that this human ate over their lifetime. He's discovering that Neanderthals were almost exclusively meat eaters, although there were many fruits, berries, and edible roots in their environment. We don't see any evidence that plant protein was at all important in their diet. I mean, it doesn't look like they had marine food at all. They were hunting large herbivores like bison or reindeer and things like that. They were carnivores, with a diet closer to that of a predator, like a wolf, than a human. And they showed few signs of change, no matter where they lived. So far, we've measured the type specimen from Germany, the Neanderthals from Skladina, Neanderthals from France and Croatia, over about 100,000 years. And in every case, in all these different environments, the Neanderthals do the same thing. So the bones of the boy from Skladina and his people are revealing important clues to Neanderthal behavior. They did one thing, hunting large game, and they just kept on doing it. For hundreds of thousands of years, their technology tells a similar story. The Neanderthal technology is, is quick and dirty. It's simple. There's very few tools that Neanderthal has made that one can't copy in a few seconds or even minutes. Although they hunted large animals, they didn't have throwing spears or arrows. None of the, the uh, stone tools that the Neanderthal made are of the size and shape sufficient to be a projectile point. They're all too big, which suggests they're either knives or tips of thrusting spears. That meant Neanderthal hunters had to get close to their prey to kill them, which made hunting a risky business. Most Neanderthal male skeletons have multiple fractures. Neanderthal lives were tough, and they were short. Their skeletons tell us that very few lived beyond the age of 30. But as a species, the Neanderthals were long-lived. They lasted for almost 400,000 years. That's twice as long as we have. But one day, their time on Earth would come to an end. By 25,000 years ago, they vanish from the fossil record. So what happened? To find out, we have to return to Africa. The Great Rift Valley the stage on which so much of human evolution has played out. It was here, millions of years ago, that nature began its grand experiment with creatures like Lucy, who walked upright. It was here, just over a million years ago, that Turkanabor and his kind, with their bigger brains and bodies, formed the first hunter-gatherer societies. And it was here, about 200,000 years ago, that the skulls of a new species start to be found. The last human to evolve, Homo sapiens. They are still not completely us. Their brow ridges are a little heavier, their faces a little bigger, and their technology is still simple. 